What's up, everyone? This is Shane and Tiger from RNS TCG. Uh, Tiger here. He's been on the channel before. He's uh, filling in for Ryan today. Ryan's a little <coughs> under the weather, so to speak. <coughs> and uh, anyways, we're here today. We're talking about uh, Wizards, the new booster packs they're going to have. They're getting rid of draft and set boosters uh, in favor of what they call a play booster. Um, what a play booster is going to have, I'm going to pull it up on the screen here. This is what a play booster is going to have. It's basically a mix between a draft and a set booster. And the reasoning why they're doing this is because they're trying to streamline it, have one basic booster pack product instead of having two different ones so that people aren't confused. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of people want the more rares in the packs like the set boosters have and not, you know, a single one rare or mythic per pack like the draft boosters have, but you can't draft set boosters. So basically they're trying to find a happy medium and combine them into one product like, like Magic has had, <laughs> you know, since the beginning, basically. They didn't start doing these set boosters so not that long ago. So real quick here, uh, on the screen here, you see um, what we have here. The first uh, six slots are going to be common cards. Uh, the next slot is either a common or a card from the list. Uh, slots 8 through 10 are your uncommons. Slot 11 is your rare or mythic. Slot 12 is going to be a basic land. Uh, slot 13 is a non-foil wild card. So it's a wild card, so it could be... That means it could be a common, it could be an uncommon, it could be a rare, it could be a mythic, it could be any of the above. Um, this card it could be yeah uh anything and then uh your slot number 14 is your foil wild card so again it could be common uncommon rare mythic whatever but it is going to be in foil treatment so you're guaranteed to foil in every pack and then the 15th one is your your ad card your token your you know your whatever and then um you'll see on there little green dots next to all of them and it says at the bottom may contain booster fun I actually had to look up what the hell they meant by booster fun because that's the first time I'm hearing the term. And all that is is just different treatments of the cards. So it could be a full art. It can be a showcase border. That's all that means is that any of the cards can have a, a special treatment to them, essentially. Um, so that's how they're laying out the packs. And then just give a quick... This is a, a screenshot from... Mark Rosewater's post today on uh, Wizards website, or I guess it's, yeah, Wizards Magic website. Um, this just lays out what the differences are between this and a set booster and this and a draft booster. So I'll just go ahead and read this real quick. And then once we get through the that technical stuff, um, Tiger and I will talk about our thoughts and feelings on this whole new deal. So differences from set boosters. There's two more playable cards than there would be in a set booster pack no connected commons or uncommons which means you know the set boosters they tried to follow some sort of theme you know whether it be like say there's wizards in the set maybe most of the cards in the pack you got had wizards or maybe there was a color theme or whatnot they're not going to do that because it's they're not draftable that way and oh hi cat <laughs> cat decided to say hi <laughs> um one less non-foil wild card, one less non-playable object, so like the art cards, um, and only a one in three opportunity of having the art card. Well, I guess the non-playable object would be a token. Sorry, not an art card. But yeah, one in three opportunity now of getting an art card instead of a guaranteed art card in the set booster packs. Uh, differences from the draft booster packs. Um, the potential to open up four rare or mythic rare cards. You know, it was only one before. Well, you could get two if you got a foil one at the end. Um, one less playable card. Uh, three less commons. One more non-foil wild card. One traditional foil wild card. Like I said earlier, you're guaranteed one foil per pack now. Um, a one in eight opportunity of getting a card from the list. And a roughly one in three opportunity of an art card, you know, like I said here before. Um, 
so yeah, that's that's where they're going. They're starting this with um, Murders at Karlov Manor, which comes out January or February. Um, so Ixalan is still going to have the set boosters and um, Dominaria. Dominaria remastered. Yeah, is going to have the uh, still have the set booster packs. So uh, I guess we'll get into it. Tiger, give you a chance. <laughs> I've been blathering on here. Give you a chance. What are your what are your thoughts? What do you want to bring up on the subject? So, what I really wanted to bring up was on the article, they have multiple different problems that Mark Rose Water kind of lays out mm-hmm. on all the boxes. One of the problems was problem number four. It causes confusion in the marketplace. Oh, yeah, by having draft and set By boosters. having draft and soup set boosters but you also have to remember that they have collector's boosters which he said he said they're not going to change or they are looking to change he or... said he says they're not looking to make any <laughs> uh i think he said any significant changes significant changes to right. collector booster packs but when they first re- started to release set boosters that also still caused the confusion in the marketplace so why why do it again? Um, so there, there's like a difference between like when you buy like a draft booster, right? You know what you're buying for a draft booster. Normally you're going to get what? 36 packs. 36 packs. Yep. 36 packs. You're going to get lands. You're going to get tokens. You're going to be able to, to do a draft too with your friends. Yep. With a set booster, it's different where like, yeah, it can be all, the same kind of cards, the same kind of colors, but there, you know what you are buying when you when you go for the set booster versus the draft booster. So I don't think it made any confusion. So what they're what they're really trying to say is we're just gonna match these two together. That's exactly what they're saying. They're basically, uh, I think what a big part of the problem was is that. Um, you have look your local game stores that are buying now instead of having one one basic base product to buy now there's essentially two base products for every yeah. set and they're going okay well you know we do Friday night magic drafts here so we need we need the draft boosters of course because we got it you can't draft the set but yeah. now we're starting to see hey more people are that coming and buying that would normally buy draft boxes from us. They're only buying set boxes. So now we're getting stuck with all these draft boxes that we can only use for our drafts and everybody's buying set boxes. So it kind of upset things. I think that's kind of where some of the confusion he's talking about is coming from. And I can see that. I mean, I I, I get it too. It, it's just also, but you also have the collector boosters, which still cause confusion in the marketplace. Yeah. I mean, just look at Lord of the Rings itself. <laughs> How many people do you think bought more collector collector boosters and boxes to try to get that one ring than oh, they course. did probably like a set booster or a draft booster? Right. It's it's too many products. I, you know, I personally liked it. What? How, how how magic was before they had the set and the collector boosters? You just had your draft booster box. It was <laughs> you know rares were rare. You know it was. <laughs> You, you know, it, it was harder to get them where now, you know, you get, you, 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 you get, get one, you get one per pack back then. Now you're getting one to four per pack. And it's just, it kind of, you know, ruins what rare is in my mind. But at the same time, I, I kind of like that they're going back to only one box. box, not just having these two separate boxes, but I don't like how it's set up, how it is over here, how it's set up. I don't think there needs to be the possibility of getting four rares or four mythics or a combination thereof in every pack because it just it cheapens the experience to me. I understand why they do that. There's, you know, a lot of especially if you're not drafting, you don't want you don't want to have to go through all those bulk commons and uncommons every time. You want the rares, you want the mythics. I understand that. But I think that's kind of where the collector packs kind of have a have a place. So why not just have a regular draft box like they used to be 
and then have the collectors, and then there's nothing in between. You know, if you want the special stuff, get the collectors. Maybe they could revamp the collectors so that there's there's more there's more better, more better. in them, or the the different ratios. Maybe not as many treatments on them. Something. Maybe bring yeah, the price higher, point down on them a little bit and change or things. Just, or just put more mythics and more rares and less commons. Because you can still yeah. pull, like, just different foil treated or full art commons. Yeah, maybe so maybe like, that's well, maybe that's what they do for the collectors is get rid of, you know, maybe only have one or two slots for commons and the rest is, you know, uncommon and higher. And that way that, you know, fills that that knit that need in the market right there but leave the draft ones alone you don't need the extra rares in there i think that's gonna you know obviously I, well obvious to tiger here <laughs> it's not obvious to you guys out there tiger and i and uh ryan and our, our other friend ian we draft every set that comes out and you know we do a, a double elimination style uh tournament four week long tournament and I think, well, I'll know more when, when Karlov, Murders at Karlov Manor come out, but I think having this, this many potential for rares and mythics in each pack is going to kind of cheapen the draft experience a bit. Well, what are your thoughts, Tiger? I don't think so. Not so. It's kind of weird because it's like, yes, it is one to four uh, rares, which does kind of cheapen it, but if if you pull the pack that has one rare. <laughs> well, yeah. Right. <laughs> you know. But, I mean, they're all getting drafted around, so, I mean... They're all getting drafted around, so you are guaranteed more rares, which is... But, like, what I'm trying to say is I think it's going <clears> to <throat> kind of skew the drafting a bit, because usually when we do the drafting, you know, it's... Uh, you know, most of the cards in our decks are commons and uncommons, of course. With more yeah. rares and mythics being introduced into the packs this way, I think it's going to up the level of what people are playing with, which is fine, but, but I, 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 like, I like the challenge of building a deck you know, out of the random shit that I pull that's not good cards. <laughs> you also have to remember, too, like, you're, you don't, in a draft, and, like, the mindset, if I was sitting down at the draft, I would kind of gravitate, yes, towards the rares, but also to, like, the commons and uncommons, because you know you're going to get more of them. Right. And it also it it just makes it a little bit weird to kind of dra- you're basically drafting around your rares at that point. Yeah, and which is what I'm saying. I think it, it changes. It's going to change the experience, at least for myself. I think. I mean, I'll know I mean, more in a couple months. <laughs> gaining new experience is all about the magic experience, <laughs> right? Yeah, I get it. It is an ever changing deal, right? <laughs> Shit. There's an ever-changing game with more keywords and more other stuff to yeah. come out. Oh, um, one more quick thing that I didn't get to before. So these booster boxes are going to have 36 packs in each box, just like a draft box does. But individual booster packs, they say, are going to be priced at the same price as what set booster packs are priced at. So I don't know what we're looking at for prices for these new play booster boxes, but they're going to be more expensive than set booster boxes currently are. So I have a feeling we're looking at retail probably for just regular standard legal sets. We're probably looking at boxes, 150, 160 for a, what is essentially a draft box. So that's, uh, (laughs) <laughs> Which does kind of suck because yeah. it's like, um, when I buy boxes, yes, I do buy more set booster boxes and I do draft booster boxes, mm-hmm. but it's, I buy, I bought a lot of Wilds of Eldraine set boosters because I, I love the set. Yeah. And I really like the special art cards and all that that went into that set. Same reason I bought Lord of the Rings set boosters. I wanted the special arts. I wanted it all, like... Right. I wanted all the foil lands, basically. And I don't buy many draft boosters because I don't draft, like, by myself. But right. if I wanted if I wanted more commons, uncommons, to kind of try to find something or maybe make, like, a limited deck with just that set, like, an idea with it, yeah, I would probably buy a draft booster. But if you're not 
building sealed products or like building with sealed products, it's eh, you're just buying singles at that point, right? <laughs> which is which is exactly what Mark Rosewater's point was in this article that because of that, and and I agree, like you know, if you're just looking, you know, if you're not, you're looking to cut out some of the fluff. That's what yeah. that's what you would buy. You'd buy a, a set booster box. That makes perfect sense. Just like uh, uh, Caverns, Lost Caverns at Ixalan coming out here. They're going to have Jurassic Park cards. They're only in set and collector boxes. Well, why would I bother to dry, buy draft boxes? Buy a draft boxes. And, I you know, buy other, other, other than if I want a draft. <laughs> you know, understandable. Yeah. So at that point, they're kind of, by working it in that way and adding in stuff in the set that's not in the draft, making it sort of a premium over that, you're, they're, kind of shooting themselves in the foot and causing they they've caused these problems for themselves in the marketplace by not you know i'm sure sales have declined significantly on sealed draft boxes versus sealed set boxes everybody just wants to get the set boxes and that's what you know wizards of the coast has noticed and that's what what they're trying to remedy with this but which again i i i I agree they should go down to one box, not have two separate boxes. But I I still say my main gripe, I guess you'd say with this, is I don't like them adding in. I don't like their guaranteed foil. The foils are supposed to be special. I don't like the guaranteed foil. Well, I guess they aren't. They haven't been special for a long time. I guess I'm thinking back to when I was a kid, you open a 7th seventh, <laughs> seventh edition booster pack and, oh, hey, look, I got a foil, you know, forest. That was a, that was the first foil I ever got was a foil forest, 7th edition, you know, when they first started making the foils. And, and I was so ecstatic because <laughs> all my buddies that got packs that day, nobody got a foil card. And, <laughs> you know, it was, it, it was, it was a treat to get a foil or it was a treat to get a really good rare or when they came out with mythic rares, it was a treat at first to get a mythic rare. Now... It, it it everything's cheapened. The treat is the treat is not as sweet anymore, and it's just maybe I'm just looking at this through you know rose colored yeah. glasses here <laughs> and through nostalgia. But I I just I would prefer if they kept the draft boxes that made these play boxes the play packs the same as what the draft bo- packs are right now. They kept them the same, and then they just had the collector ones, but maybe did something a little bit different with the collector ones so that the price could be down so that the people that do want the shiny cards that do want more rares per pack, it's a more available price range and they could just have just those two things. But I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I can't, I can't say too much on, you know, I, I'm not saying I hate the idea. I just, I'm not yeah, sure how I feel that, about man. it. I'm not sure how I feel about it until I have a box in hand, open that box up, and go to draft with it for Murders of Carla Manor. When, when we go to draft for it, I, I got to see how I feel after that. Then I'll know for sure how I feel about this. Hey, you know, maybe I'll do it and I'll go, this is fucking great. Wizards should have done this years ago. Maybe I'll be like, they just fucked up drafting. I don't know. We'll see. Time will tell, but... You know. uh, and to add on to your foil thing, uh, I think it I think it is really funny because I know I have so many different foils and just bulk boxes yeah. that I don't really care about. Yeah. But obviously I keep some of my cards like some of the foiling treatments safe. But the one thing that I know this only kind of affects us really for the draft is those wild cards and the list card. We right. had we had that kind of an issue with the Wilds of Odrain draft where there was the those extra cards right. uh, from the list that were in that draft. And this isn't like for other drafts or anything, but we we just took those. Yeah, so what Tiger's and, referring to is those <laughs> the cards that were the what they call them, Wilds of Eldrain. The, the ones that didn't have the same symbol as the regular Wilds of Eldrain. The extra ones you got one per pack. For the draft packs um what we did is we didn't include those as playable cards legal cards for our draft so whenever we open a pack if you had you know you got one of those cards boom immediately put it to the side you could just get to keep that card and then pull whatever card it is you want to put for your in your deck and then pass the pack around until you know we were finished with the draft and uh 
Yeah, I think, and, and for for organized play, like if you went to a Friday Night Magic, they would let you include those. They, yeah, for the pre-release and for mm-hmm. outside, they let you keep those. But at the same, on that same token, though, you could get three of those. Yeah. Well, and, and they and they don't wide, and they don't uh, necessarily the fit. They don't necessarily fit into the set <clears> and can. That, and that's why we decided not to use them because it can. Uh, I just wanted to draft the set, the, you know. The set. Um, so I think personally, for our play group, once they switch over to these, if someone pulls a list card, because you're not guaranteed a list card, yeah. But if somebody pulls a list card, we're just gonna do the same thing. You pull a list card, hey, that's a bonus card you got. Good for you. Keep that one, but don't use it in your deck for this draft. Well, what I'm saying is that it does kind of eat into the number the, of cards. The number of cards. Back. Well, and it does. And also, there's, what, 14 cards where there's normally 15 in a draft. So you're already it's already eaten into it as well. He goes into that, too, and says, oh, we've done the math on it, and it works out. And it's like, well, okay, we'll, we'll see. And... and and we do our drafts differently too. You know, you go to a Friday Night yeah. Magic or a pre-release, and for their draft, they're doing you're doing what forty card decks, right? Forty card decks for those drafts. We do a, a sixty card, you know, a basic deck size um, for ours. So we'll see how that works for ours. We might even have to modify that. We might have to start doing forty card decks so that it works. Who knows? I I don't know the the full logistics of it until I have them in hand and I'm opening packs up. So, but yeah, valid point, Tiger. There's a five percent chance of an art card with a signature in the play booth. <laughs> well, I mean, that's something people go through. Oh I yeah, guess, some but... some people some people collect those. I mean, they're not, dude. I got, <laughs> well, you know, running a business here. I, dude, I got stacks over here piled up of those freaking art cards, like. The only ones I ever sold is I think uh, what did I sell? Um, I don't know. There were a couple sets ago. There was some that people were looking for, and I was able to sell a couple. But I mean, I'm sure if you get a whole set together, you could probably sell it. But like, oh, it's not. I don't know. It's not worth it to chase after those to me. But to each their own. If you want to collect them and you collect them, by all means, go for it. I mean, I'm I'm glad that it's not a guaranteed card placement in there because that's I that's just extra junk I end up just throwing away <laughs> eventually. In, what I, in case the, anybody is like, oh, they're just shaking their fists that <laughs> at the sky. I do like the fourteen. I do actually like the fourteen playable cards. It's it's like right in between set booster. And draft boost, or it's like kind of in between set booster and draft right. Booster. It's it's two two more cards in the set <clears throat> and one less in the draft. So one yeah, less right in between. The draft. I just like I said, I I'm just I'm curious to see the logistics of it in an actual in an actual physical draft just to see how it works. Um, you know, I'm not personally one less card. Eh, I'm not too butt hurt about one less card, especially when yeah you you are getting your guaranteed foil and you are you know potential for more rares and or mythic rares um so the the expected value is still there in this so you're not losing out on anything per se and realistically that one card you're missing out on was just going to be a common anyway so (laughs) i'm not too i'm not too worried about losing one extra common card that i'm don't care about you know yeah, and that's the other thing too was the ratios. That how they're redoing the ratios mm-hmm. is is kind of nice. Yes, it does kind of rely more on the mythics and rares. Yeah. or kind of puts more mythics and rares into the set. But I like the extra, like getting able to get more commons and uncommon. Like still being able to get more uncommons and commons, mm-hmm. and still kind of build a deck with that. Right, which is. which is what they're going for. They want you to be able to draft with it, so they, they have to include these. But it is nice that it is kind of taking a bit of a step back, so you're not getting too many of them. I mean, yeah. you're getting more rares and mythics, which, like I said, I'm on the I mean, fence. So, I'm on the fence whether I like that or not. 
Sometimes personally. that one common though can be like the real game changer when oh, you're yeah. drafting. Oh, I yeah. just need that one more Titanic girl. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> or you know, or that one more cancel. I need one more cancel yeah. in my deck. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Or hey, so you know, sometimes it's it's the rare too. Sometimes you know, yeah, like there's like hoping for that one. One card. Need it. Need another regal bunicorn. Another regal <laughs> bunicorn. Come on. <laughs> and I do. I do think that yeah, it will change on how you and I draft and how everybody else drafts. And I think that is healthy for the game. It will kind of bring up the game to more like mm -hmm. competitiveness of like you are really thinking about the cards that you are grabbing from your draft booster when you are doing uh, drafts. Right. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. And I, yeah, I think it's going to, it will add maybe a sense more of purposefulness to that. I just, like I said, I guess my whole deal is, I liked draft boxes the way they used to be. <laughs> <laughs> That's my main gripe is I guess I'm living in the past here. Living in Magic's past. Um, I like draft boxes how they used to be. I'm kind of eh about it, but at the same time, I do like that they're going back down to one box, not having two separate boxes. I never liked that idea. I never liked the idea of having two separate, essentially competing boxes. Having the collector's thing, that's a whole different deal. That's fine. I'm I'm on board with them having the collector thing, especially if people want the full art foil, the guaranteed full art foils and whatnot, or and or special treatment cards. You know, I'm all for that. If you want that, psh, go for it. Buy that if that's the product you like. Um but I didn't, I didn't like having a draft in a set. So I'm glad they're, com I am glad they're combining it down to one. I just don't know how I'm gonna totally feel about it until I actually do a draft. So one thing I am curious about with their change to doing play boosters instead of all of this is what's going to happen to bundles. Uh. So, no mention of bundles in the article, so I'm yeah. Not so sure. I didn't see anything on that. Huh. And and I wonder how what they're gonna do for pre-release set uh, like sealed boxes. It's kind of interesting to yeah. think about because they yeah, I don't know they they had to change bundles from what was it like ten packs down to eight packs, and well pre-releases I think had five packs in them. Well, I so think I think what's going to happen is those those number of packs are gonna still going to be the same for both of those. It's just going to cost more money. That's what's going to yeah. happen. You know, you go to a... Uh, they also what, 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 what were they charging uh, when you went to Mox's in Bellevue to go for a pre-release? What were they charging? $25. Okay, so now you go for a pre-release. How many packs are you getting? Four or five? Five to, five. Five to six. Five to six. Maybe. Okay. Well, look at it this way now. Um, you know... Wizards doesn't do MSRP anymore. They haven't done MSRP since twenty. It was either twenty sixteen or twenty nineteen. They stopped doing MSR. Uh, manufacturers suggested retail price on it products. Right after, it was right when Almond Kit came out. Okay, so you know they just had the market dictate the value. Well, if we look at today's value, let's just say use TCG Player as an example. Everybody knows TCG Player. Um, Wilds Eldrain um, draft booster packs right now are three dollars 55 cents that's what the going rate is on tcg player the set booster packs right now are five dollars and 15 cents um so we can safely assume that these play boosters because he says in the article they're going to be the same price as what set boosters are now mm -hmm. um we can safely assume that they're going to be five dollars plus per pack 36 packs in a box. Obviously, the price comes down because you're buying in quantity. Or, you know, yeah, buying in quantity there. But still, that's... Uh, I think we're looking at 150 plus dollar retail for boxes. Or more, depending on what the set or is. Or more, depending. Um, so that's going to be interesting how that goes. Um, I mean, I guess... I guess what they're thinking is, if I could read their minds here, read Mark Rosewater's mind, is that, well, now you don't have to go buy a draft box and a set box. You know, you, you and your buddies are going to draft, 
So you buy the draft, but you want cards for yourself. You don't have to go buy both. Now you can just buy all in one and just do it in one. I guess that's what their thinking is on this. But um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see how it goes because, yeah, I don't know. Nobody likes when prices of things go up. But <laughs> I kind of – I actually personally like that. I try to temper myself to only buying, like, one box – whenever a set comes out. Yep. Obviously, there are sets of Magic where I can't help myself. I had to buy all of it. <laughs> <laughs> but I do like how they are combining the set booster and draft booster, so I don't have to buy so much. Right, stuff. which is right. basically what I was just saying. It's it's It streamlines the whole process. It brings it closer to being what it used to be where there was just one thing, which yeah. I, I agree with. There should just be one thing. I just, I don't know. Just I just don't necessarily agree with the combinations of what what types of cards are going to be in there. Like I said, again, we'll see I when think. I actually open packs how I feel. Then um, I'm not. It's not like I hate this idea. I like the idea yeah. of going back to one box. I just I need to see for myself how it's going to be for a draft. As far as me going out and wanting to buy a box for myself, oh, I much prefer this box. this <laughs> over a draft box or a set box i much prefer this because you're getting the more packs out of it and i like this setup as far as from a me getting packs just on my own to build my own decks or on a collector standpoint i'm just on the fence how i feel about this from a drafting standpoint yeah well obviously we'll have to figure it out i i am really excited about the set that they are doing this in the murders at Carlo Manor, Manor. Yeah. is they're, like, they're, they're clue it's set. all about clue set so I'm interested to see what they kind of do with that with the play boosters because we have now the list there are art cards there are um, what was the other thing there's the um, different the wild card that could be whatever. Right, the different treatments. Oh, different treatments. You, so. you reminded me, um, the list. So for current sets, for the list, the li list of cards they're using for the list is like something like three hundred cards long. Uh, Mark does say in this post that for these new sets coming out, at, le at least for the ones starting off with uh, Murders at Carlisle Manor, their their list that they're using. They're trying to use cards that are more related to whatever set that they're going to put them in. And the list that they're going to use from, pull from, for that particular set is only going to be 30 or 40 cards long. So that seems like something, too, that's interesting that they're going to try to tailor it to maybe have cards that kind of fit in with the set. So I, I like that aspect of it, too. Instead of it just being, you know, I pull out and I go, oh, yeah, I you know, a Karn. This does not fit in this set at all. Sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the other thing I do like is that they are bringing in artists. Like, uh, artist-specific cards. Which they kind of only did with Secret Lair. Mm -hmm. So now they're kind of bringing that to, like, the main... Uh, like the the main product, yeah. And with that, the... The, what you were just saying, some of those cards are like reprints from like old cards that right, and they're gonna have new coming, artwork, yeah, which is which is nice if you're yeah. looking for like a new a new art for something that's really I think that's really cool. Yeah, it's like a little extra little extra treat. It's it's almost like okay, you know, let's go back to my analogy before when packs, you know, when you there's only a rare in your pack and. On a real special occasion, you might get a foil card. That's kind of like, that's the treat, right? The foil. I, I guess almost now the list card is almost kind of your your treat almost. The the list card or the mythic rare? Or yeah, oh, of course, of course, always the mythic rare. You gotta you gotta you gotta yell out mythic rare anytime you open a pack and there's one there. Mythic rare. You know, you, you gotta yell that out. <laughs> oh, but just shit. I did find the featured card list that they came out with and some of the cards do look uh pretty pretty good uh 
like Pact of Negation, I know is a really, really good card to reprint, but it really depends on when they are going to reprint these cards. Are right. they all going to come out in that one? Are they all going to be in that manners of Karlov? Are they going to be spread out between the different play boosters that are going to be coming out with the new sets in the, in the next right. quarter? And that right? and that's kind of where it's it, it kind of, from my understanding of the article, what I read, it sounds like those ones are somewhat specific to that going to be in that set as far as list cards go but but we don't know <laughs> we don't we don't know for sure and i'm sure that they'll tweak stuff down the road and yeah. and change things so your guess is as just, good as mine i just thought it was interesting yeah no for sure uh, you have any other points you wanted to bring up I'm going through the his list of the uh, art, article thing mm-hmm. as well too, just because this article does have a lot. It's it's it. a it's a fairly lengthy article. The, I mean, he addresses all of the problems that of why they're doing it, and then like the issues of why they're and trying to fix those issues, which. Like, I appreciate as a player and a collector of this game. Yeah, for sure. And I appreciate it as a, a player, a collector, and a seller of <laughs> these cards. I, I appreciate him laying it all out there the way he did, too. It's it's uh, a well-thought-out article, actually. It, it answers way more questions than it raises. Yeah, he really tries to make it super, super streamlined, super, super, super like Very easy clear. to understand. Yep. yep, agreed. Yeah, I'm trying to think if I had any other... I mean, I, <laughs> I guess I've made my opinion clear. I like the idea of going back <laughs> to one box, but I on the fence of how I feel about it working with drafts until I actually do it. I do that they do a lot of playtesting with it. Uh, it's, it, it sounds like they have from the article that they've <laughs> mulled around with it and done it, but then again, I mean, Wizards in the past has made decisions too that, you know, on maybe on paper it looked good, but then in reality it's like... You know, so whatever uh, thirty-year anniversary thing could you be <laughs> yeah. talking about? Oh um, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't know what I, I don't know. <laughs> <My bad>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I can already see some steam coming out of some viewers' ears right now hearing you say that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you reprinted my revised list. <laughs> Oh shit! Something that they said they would never do. Yeah, but th- but they're not tournament illegal. <laughs> and I mean, they don't they don't hold the value. I mean, I don't think it really overall hurt the value of actual reserve list cards. So, but anyways, that's a topic for a whole different thing. That's not what we're talking about today. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Unless you have another point you want to bring up, uh, I think I've said all I need to say on the subject for today. Yeah, I think. I think that's all I wanted to say, too. I mean, obviously, like, you don't know <laughs> other thoughts that are going to come up until they hit you again. Right, or but... or until, like I said, we have the product in hand and can actually um, see how it, it works in real life. So, yeah. well, I think more more information to come. Yep. We'll have to just keep our, our fingers on the pulse here yep. just to check to see how it's kind of doing. Yep, sounds good. Well, uh, Tiger, I wanted to thank you for joining me tonight since uh, Ryan couldn't make it. Thanks for having me. Yep, and uh, please like, subscribe, share, all that jazz. Um, uh, Below in the description there will be a link to the original article from Mark Rosewater, um, as well as links to all of our social media, our our Facebook, eBay, um, and so on. Um, So, yeah. Thanks for joining, and until next time, see ya.